done in 45 minutes but some people can't get done in an hour and a half i'm just messing now don't don't take me too serious on that i'm just messing around glory to god got to get you out there and share this with other folks and turn the, the volume down so that we don't sound like an eight track tape hallelujah ah, hey sister of minneapolis good to have you tonight hallelujah Righty there. In glory. We've been um Oh dear Lord. Hey Penny. We're continuing teaching. I, I got some uh, some news. We'll go ahead and put this up here. We're get, we got some news. Talking about confession. We missed last week. Everybody know why we missed last week? Snow. I mean the the snowstorm that was supposed to be somewhere in the neighborhood of maybe two to three inches, and we got anywhere from eight to ten. Hallelujah! And uh, you know, they, nobody nobody around here. Now there were some places that were predicting, but nobody around here was calling for that much. And um, I talked to, to somebody that night. You know, they said it was snowing. It was just it was up in the atmosphere snowing, and it was evaporating. We would have gotten hammered had that got. I mean, we we got eight nine inches was was hammering. We'd have gotten somewhere in the neighborhood of twelve to fifteen inches had that that been making the ground. So, those of you who were complaining, so maybe you should be happy that some of it evaporated. Um, real quick, we're we're going to, and this will probably be start mid February, maybe. March, but I'm, I'm shooting for mid-February. We're going to take Wednesday Bible studies for probably at least three months because it's, it's a, it's a ten-lesson uh, thing we'll be working on. And um, but we're going to be teaching on the authority of the believer. Now, in this, we're going to be um, getting the authority of the believer study guide by Brother Hagen. We'll be getting. The Authority of the Believer Legacy Edition by Brother Hagen, and then 
the Authority of the Believer tape series and the or CD series and the and the Reigning in Life as a King CD series. Okay, um, we're going to provide the materials to people who come. Okay, we have enough. Well, we have enough food for ten people. All right. So the church is going to provide that for y'all to do the Bible study with. This is going to be a 10-week. I say 10-week. There's 10 lessons. Now, <laughs> getting through a lesson in a week, this could be a year-long event. But we're going, be, we're going to be doing that. So with the CDs, um, what you'll be doing is you'll be listening to certain CDs according to the study guide prior to coming on Wednesday night and looking at the questions in the book and stuff. So uh, this is going to be um, uh, a in-depth study on the authority of the believer from that one it's probably considered brother Hagen's um, benchmark series of ministry is the authority of the believer uh, although he taught faith you know all those years this book is what revolutionized people's faith and their, their walk with God okay so I wanted y'all to know that and uh, be aware of that share us on Facebook those on Facebook you can um you can go to Amazon or you can go to Rhema, uh, uh, Kenneth Hagin Ministries and order these materials. Uh, I believe to order everything I just told you is like $59 uh, for the study guide, the book, and the two tape series. Okay. All right. And uh, so. We're going to be starting. So if you're watching and you want to be a part of that, you'll need to get that material so that you can go along with us. All right. And the workbook is a workbook. I mean, you fill out questions and answer questions in it and that kind of thing. Okay. All righty. So that's, that's up and coming. We, we just seem like the right thing to do, you know, and uh, that, you know, we can, we could preach the authority of the believer. Sometimes some of those things are just, they're good to be taught in that kind of setting. Okay. So uh, praise the Lord. And we're glad to have y'all with us tonight. Glory to God. Let's go ahead and jump right on in here. Uh, Proverbs 18, 21 is our foundational text of, Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Okay? And so we, we talked about, you know, um, a couple weeks ago, what did we say? Number one, um, you know, death and life, so I'm just going to put D and L, are where? Or N is R. power of life of this is in, is in the tongue okay let me just kind of redo this the power of life and death is in the tongue okay Is that better? No. Nope. Is that right? Y'all help me out here, guys. Okay. Okay. And then two, which we covered last time. I'm going to kind of got to get the right info or the right, you know, got to get the right information. Why? Because it's the power of life and death is in the tongue, or your words. Okay? Proverbs 18.21. You have to watch this on a 90-inch television at home to see some of that. Okay? And so we covered, you know, these two over the past two times we were together. Uh, again, we took off last week. We, we didn't have any choice. Community center was closed. Um, you know, power life, and we got to get the words in the right place, and that's where we kind of finished up. So let's go now uh, to our third point, and let's get to Deuteronomy chapter 30. Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy. All right. So we'll go to Deuteronomy. We'll read verses. 16 okay and so we have Deuteronomy chapter 30 verses 10 through 16 and it says here um, if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God to keep his commandments and his statutes 
which are written in the book of the law. And remember, remember last time we were together, we talked about how the law was um, what Moses had written has always been referred to as the law, the five books of you know, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy are considered or uh, referred to as the law and to rightly um, specify for New Testament terminology, we could just simply say the word of God, okay? All right? Uh, to keep his commandments and his statutes, which are written in this book of the law or in the word of God. And if you turn unto the Lord thy God with all your heart and with all your soul, for this commandment which I commanded this day, it is not hidden from thee, neither is it far off. It is not in heaven that thou shouldest say, who shall go up for us to heaven and bring it unto us that we may hear it and do it. Neither is it beyond the sea that thou shouldest say, who shall go over the sea for us and bring it unto us that we may hear it and do it. But the word is nigh, very, is very nigh to thee in thy mouth and in thy heart that thou mayest do it. See, I have set before thee this day life and good and death and evil, in that I command thee this day to love the Lord thy God to walk in his ways, to keep his commandments and his statutes and his judgment, that thou mayest live and multiply, and the Lord thy God shall bless thee in the land where thou goest to possess it. So, from here in Deuteronomy, and we'll read, we'll read the companion scripture from the New Testament. Uh, what? Blessing or cursing or evil. Okay. It's where? It's in our power. It's within our grasp. What? If we do and we keep the word of God. Okay? So it's really um, is our choice. It's our choice. See, when you're, when you're a sovereignist or a, a predestinist, that everything is mapped out and you can't do anything to change it. It's just going to happen no matter what. Then this does, you can't use these scriptures. I've said it before. God said, I set before you life and good, blessing, I mean, uh, evil and, and uh, let me see how exactly where he said, life and good, um, and death and evil, okay? So he said life and good, okay? So we can say life and good, which is blessing, you know, life. Good. Or what? Death. And okay. Now God said what well, he he set that before us. He set it before us. Didn't say he predetermined which one we were going to walk in. Okay. He said, see that I have set before thee life and de good, death and evil, in that I command thee this day. What? He's telling you if you'll do what he says in his word, you're going to get the blessing, life and good side. Okay. You're going to be able to walk in the life and good side. Okay. Because um, he goes on in this verse and says, in that I commanded this day to love the Lord thy God, to walk in his ways, to keep his commandments and his statutes and his judgments, that what? That thou mayest live and multiply, and the Lord thy God shall bless thee in the land whether thou goest to possess it. But if, look at verse 17. But if you turn away so that you will not hear, but shall be drawn away and worship other gods, I denounce you this day and you shall perish. Now, what's, he's making it very clear that the way to have blessing and cursing is to do what the word says. Okay? It's set before us. God didn't change because Jesus came. Jesus' coming was the empowerment to do what God said. Before that event, you could not do it. You couldn't keep it. You could try, and you could, but eventually you just couldn't keep it. Jesus has empowered us to do it. So we're not talking about, you know, power of the flesh. We're not talking about keeping laws and commandments, uh, you know, and, you know, if you don't, you're going to turn and burn. It is, this is what God believes. God's saying, if you'll do what I say in my word, then you're going to get blessed. And it's not works in the sense of earning your salvation. We have such a skewed, and we, we talked about this 
um, I, I guess last time we got to end Sunday. We have such a skewed understanding in, in the charismatic word of faith, grace circles of what works really are and what the scriptures mean by the term works. And we get so skewed on it that we can't rightly divide the word of truth. Because you hear the word works. I, I'm, I, I'm not a works lest any man should boast. Yet in that same passage, you know, for by, by faith, by grace you say through faith that not of yourselves is the gift of God, not of works lest any man should boast. But in that same, same passage, it says we're created in Christ Jesus under good works. So it's not of works, not of the works of that I kept the Levitical law, therefore I received salvation. You can't earn salvation. You can't earn healing. Okay? You can't, you can't do enough of the law to get healed. But there's still acts of obedience that are required. It takes tithing and giving to be biblically prospered. That's not, I'm not trying to earn prosperity. I'm operating in the principles that God has laid forth in his word. And here he's telling me that if I will adhere to his commandments, I keep his judgments, I do what he says, then life and good are, are set before me. It's not a reward for doing it. Okay? There's, it's not the reward of doing the judgments you get life and blessing that doing the word, doing, keeping his judgments, keeping his statutes produces life and good. Okay, it's not the reward. Okay, if you know, we I'm blue. Okay, Nathan's dog. Love Nathan's dog. If he hears me open the graham cracker package, he comes running because he wants some graham cracker. And so he sit, lay down. Now he gets a reward for obeying. His obedience does not produce a graham cracker. Okay, that is a reward system. You obey, you get this reward. Keeping the commandments of God, you don't get rewarded, so to speak, for keeping them. What they do, because the life of God is in them, the life of God is upon them, the anointing of God is upon them, that every seed produces after its own kind. The New Testament calls the Word of God the seed of God. Amen. That when we do keep and honor the Word of God, it produces the results of life and good. God didn't go, because you did this, you get a reward. No, because you were doing it, it grew or it manifested the answer. Inasmuch as planting the seed, harvest is not the reward for planting the seed. It really isn't the reward. You, know, you didn't get rewarded. You know, people could kind of use it, but in honesty, it produced it the harvest, okay? In that kind of, kind of mindset, you're not really getting rewarded. You're simply getting the production of what planting and watering produces. It produces. Keeping the word of God, doing the word of God, speaking the word of God will produce life, blessing, life and good. Amen. Remember, we read Isaiah 55 last time. For as the, uh, the, the, the rains cometh down from heaven and the snow thither and, re, and re, returneth not and returneth not. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth and it shall not return to me void and it shall accomplish the thing whereunto I sent it. God's word came to do something when you act on it, when you feed on it, when you do it. You don't get rewarded because you were obedient. That obedience to do what the word said to do with the word produces what God sent it to do. Okay. It grows out of it. So the same thing is true, though, if you disregard it. Because what? An evil man out of the evil treasure shall bring forth evil things, and a good man out of a good treasure shall bring forth good things. If, you know, 
If word ain't coming out, unbelief is. The spirit of this world is. And so you're going to you're going to produce. You're not being rendered or or rewarded evil for doing opposite of God's word. You're simply producing what is opposite of God's word. Manufacturing it. That's why God tells them this book of the law, this word of God shall not depart out of your mouth. It wasn't a commandment because he wanted to be hard and those say, you got to know what the Bible says. This isn't a, a, a Bible uh, final exam to graduate with. It is God is telling them that because he knows that the word stays in their mouth. It's going to produce what he sent it to produce, and he wants them blessed. So he sets before them life and good, death and evil. But I command you, love me, keep my way, keep my statutes. Your ju my judgments, what? That thou mayest live and multiply. Why? Because when you speak life, you harvest life. God's not going to go, good job, Penny. Pat you on the head. Good job, Penny. Okay, you spoke life. You were obedient. Here's some life. This is the mindset we get out of the, the people who come against, you know, who get into the, the grace side of this thing so far that no matter what you do, you get blessed and whatever. Because uh, we're not on a reward system. No, we're not. But we are on a faith system. And we are on a system that the, the confession, the Bible Christianity is called the great profession. Jesus is the high priest of our profession, or, or confession in the Greek, same thing. He's the high priest of our confession. The Lord watches over his word to perform it. Not again, I, I, I don't know how to get this, you know, make it any stronger. I, I don't want to beat a dead horse, but it's not a reward when we say do what the word says do. And you and you're going to get results. It's not a reward system. I confessed it 463 times in 24 hours. Therefore, I get no. See, the confession or if you confess it 463 times and you don't believe it 462 times. Hello, if you don't believe it on the 462 times, it's not a confession. It's a meditation. I said that earlier a couple weeks ago. You're meditating. You're muttering the word. But when you speak it because you believe it, now you've confessed it and you've released that word to do what? To produce after its own kind. God's not giving you a reward for doing it so many times. The Faith in saying it, believing what you say shall come to pass, produces the harvest, produces the results. Okay? All right. Let's move on here. Because we go over to Romans chapter 10, verses 8 through 11, and we get the New Testament uh, reference to this. So we get Romans 8, 10, and 11. Okay? So this, this is quoting, and of course brought, brought in the New Testament theology, but real quickly there. But what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. Now, Paul, may, here's what he says. That whole passage in Deuteronomy, Paul quotes from that, and then he calls it this, what? That is the word of faith which we preach. That if thou shalt confess with the mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the Scripture saith, whosoever believeth on him shall not be. Now, notice, notice that when you confess Jesus as Lord, you don't get rewarded Okay, because you're obedient to confess, you get rewarded by being saved. No. The confession is based on what you believe, and that belief and that faith in Jesus, amen, that when you confess him as Lord, it produces the result of the word of God. Well, how do you know that? You know, God didn't know. How do I know that? First Peter one twenty three. Being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible, the word of God, which abideth forever. How are we born again? Well, Paul says you speak the word and you believe in your heart. Peter says that we're born again by what? The word. Not a corruptible seed, but an incorruptible, the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. 
Is that First Peter one twenty three? Um, yep, First Peter one twenty three. Glory to God. Got it right the first time. Okay, so now what's happening? Obedience to confess Him as Lord in faith. Jesus was obedient even unto death. But why? Because he had commended his, hand, his spirit into the hands of God. And the Bible says, who for the joy that was set before him became obedient even unto the death of the cross. That an act of obedience was an act of faith in that he had placed his heart into the hands of the Father. And that was going to produce what? Every seed produces after its own kind. He was sown in death. We were raised in victory. Amen. We're born again, not of corruptible seed, but incorruptible of the word of God. Well, how does that word work? That thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that raised you from the dead, thou shalt be saved. So now we have here, God saying, I'm setting before you what? Life and good, well, what's life? Jesus is life. And you've got death and evil set before you. Well, how do I get a hold of this? Because the power of life and death is in the tongue. Romans tells us that, that the word is not the even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. And then he goes on and he kind of veers off of here and comes into making it New Testament doctrine and New Testament revelation of what, what Deuteronomy says. That you're going to reap life and good and blessing, you know, and you're going to be blessed and, and all these good things are going to happen to you. Paul brings up and says, now it's the word of faith which we preach. And if you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord, believe in your heart God's raised him from the dead, you'll be saved. So now we get this, we're getting more of this revelation that the power of life and death is in the tongue. We've got to get the right information. And when we get the right information, God set before us life and death. And now we come back to the, what is the word of faith. It's the word, it's a, it's a faith. See, this isn't the works. I'm not earning my salvation, but I have to be obedient to, to believe. I have to be obedient to speak. Did you know faith can lie dormant and not produce? Remember Paul was preaching? And looked over the man who had been impotent in his, uh, from his mother's, in his feet from his mother's womb. And he perceived that he had faith to be healed. And he's still sitting there. All you need is faith in God. You've got to act on your faith. Okay? You've got to act in faith. He says, stand upright on that feet. And he leaped and walked. He had to release the faith. He had to make that, that step. Okay? There has to be that step. But what does Hebrews chapter 10 tell us? That the word did not profit the, the prophet, the Jews, not being mixed with faith. James says, we said, we said this before, show me your faith without your works, I'll show you my faith by my works. Not doing the works of the law, but by actions that correspond to what you believe. See, the power of life of this in the, in the tongue, that you're going to have to be doing things, not doing things to try to make you right think you believe it, doing things because you believe it. I could take, come here and have a stack of $100 bills up here and say, I brought a $100 bill for everybody tonight. One, two, three, four. Right enough to give everybody in the room a hundred dollar bill. Now, as soon as service is over, if you'll come out and pick one up, you can have it. Now, some of you won't believe that I'm really being serious. Uh, he's just put mess with us. I ain't gonna go out there. And, you know, some of you are gonna be knocking people down because that's your hundred dollar bill up there. You're coming to get it. All right, it's mine. It's mine. It's all mine. You know. Or, make, 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 make the illustration a little bit better, come by my house after church and I'll give you a $100 bill. Now, some of you are going, hey, Pastor, ain't serious. He's just messing with us. Come by the house. Some of you really believe that. If 
If I said that, which I'm not saying that, so don't be coming by my house. Sorry, Cap. Cap's like, really? Okay. Um, but somebody, you know, one who really know me, and, and if I wouldn't have said that didn't, if I didn't mean it, be showing up at my house. Without any, Pastor, where's the $100 bill? Now, some of you probably come and go, Pastor, were you really serious? No, I was just messing with you. Because if you come and don't really believe it, why am I going to? Anyway. All right. So, Matthew 12, 35, we quoted earlier, a good man out of the good treasure, the heart brings forth good things. An evil man out of the evil treasure brings forth evil things. Proverbs chapter, uh, the second proverb, I say, we say chapter two, but we understand that Proverbs and Psalms, they're not chapters, they're really, into, they're, they're separate unto themselves, put, collected together. My son, if thou, uh, verse one, if my son, if thou wilt receive my words and hide my comments with thee, so that thou incline thine ear unto wisdom and apply thy heart to understanding, yea, if thou criest after knowledge and lifteth up thy voice for understanding, if thou seekest her as silver and searchest her as hid treasures, then shalt thou understand the fear of the Lord and find knowledge. For the Lord giveth wisdom, and out of his mouth cometh knowledge and understanding. He layeth a sound wisdom for the righteous and a buckler to them that walk uprightly. He keeps the paths of judgment and preserveth the way of the saints. Then shall understanding, and then shalt thou shalt understand righteousness and judgment and equity, yea, every good path. Okay? Uh, when wisdom entereth into thy heart, knowledge is pleasant with thy soul. Discretion shall preserve thee. Understanding shall keep thee to deliver thee out of the way of the evil man <coughs> from the man that speaketh forward things. Okay? So. <coughs> <coughs> when you incline your interest word, when you keep the words, when you speak the words, when you do the words, it's going to keep you. It's the nature of the word of God. Okay. Um, Proverbs 3, 1 and 2. My son, forget not the law, my law, but let thine heart keep my commandments for length of days and long life and peace shall they add unto thee. Whoa. We remember we said earlier, God has set before us. How many people believe God, set, you know, that God has given them a set time? It's your time to go. It's your time to go. He said, if you keep the word, you'll add to you length of days. That was just for the Jews. Really? Have you not read that we are the Israel of God and that he is not a Jew who is one outwardly, but he is one inwardly, whose circumcision is not of the flesh, but of the heart? I'm a Jew. I'm a spiritual Jew. And God said to the Jews, if you, say, if you want to say it that way, that if you would keep his word, it'll add length of days to your life. Hallelujah. Amen. And, you know, people come up with these arguments because they just deny that God's word won't work. They're just saying God's word don't work is what they're saying. They're saying God lied. Or, and, and they can't really say God lied, so they got to say, well, God only gave it to the natural Jews. Really? Really? Well, I got a scripture for you then. Amen. If you be Christ, possess it. Then are you Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. How about that one, baby? New Testament. Y'all here, you're going home. People come up with these things and they want to and they want to be whatever. And they're, just, they're just getting help from the devil trying to deny the word of God. That was just for the Jews. Well, baby, I'm a Jew. Woo! Thoroughbred. Because I was born again. Amen. I'm a new man. Old things pass away. All that honky Caucasian European spiritual stuff's gone. All right? Whatever you are, you can say that yours is gone. I'm a new man on the inside. I'm born again. I'm a spiritual Jew. I'm a descendant of Abraham. I'm the seed of Abraham. And I'm an heir according to the promise. It didn't do anything to your body. Who cares about my body? It's my earth suit. Designer, baby. Amen. I mean, special order for me. 
Yours is special ordered for you. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. But the, 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 the thing is, when people kind of come along and go, that was just for the Jews. They don't really, that, when they tell me, they hadn't read the Bible. Particularly the New Testament. Because they wouldn't be able to say such silly things as that if they read their Bible. Without spiritual glasses on. Glasses of, you know, theological dumb dumbness. Theological stupidity. All right. Let's see if we can get. Uh, yeah. How can I do this in seven minutes? Lord, we need a Red Sea miracle. It ain't going to happen. Oh, well, we'll just back up next week. How about that? So what do we do when we get the right information? We know where it comes from. We know that God has set before us life and death. Okay? And because he's set before us life and death and we're speaking the word and we're confessing the word, what, what takes place in, in, in this? Now we hold fast. That is not fuss. Okay, so we have to hold fast our confession. Okay, look at and we, and we get uh, Hebrews. Hebrews four fourteen and Hebrews ten twenty three. I'll read those. All right, Hebrews four fourteen, Hebrews ten twenty three. Uh, seeing then we have a, a a great high priest that is passed into the heaven. Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession. King James says that. Confession in many other translations. And then Hebrews 10, 23 says, let us hold fast the profession of our faith. Again, confession. Without wavering for his faithful that promise. Now, here, this, this word, uh, confession or profession, comes from the Greek, kratio. And it means to cause... A state. Now you got to understand this is being used in 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 the state of B. Okay, that's understood in way how he's this, this. A state to continue. On the on on the basis. of some authority or power. Okay? It uh, also means um, so one, two. means to hold to keep and again to uh, cause to continue. All right. Okay. And um, this Vines. This is W. Vines. Okay. We'll give credit there. Okay. Because that's, that's where it came from. So here it is. To hold, to hold fast, to hold forth, held. Uh, to be mighty, strong, prevail. Okay, so here we have it. The, the phrase, hold fast. I'm sorry, I should have. We get the English, this English word, hold, English words, hold fast, comes from the Greek here. Okay, great deal. All right, to cause a state to continue. To cause it to continue. Holding fast. Your profession causes that state to continue. Causes it on the basis of some power authority. What's that power authority? God's word. 
All authority in heaven and earth is given unto me. Okay? To hold, to keep, to cause to continue. So here we have this. We have the word of God instructing us in Hebrews uh, 4.14 and Hebrews 10.23 to hold fast our profession. Because of the basis of the belief of some power authority, we hold fast. We keep it. Amen. We continue in that state of believing it. Amen. We do not let go of it. Okay. Why? Let us hold fast because he's faithful that promised. In other words, what does it mean he's faithful that promised? If he's faithful that promised what you're confessing, then if he's faithful, he's going to do it. If we hold fast, critio, we cause a state of that state of being, what you're confessing, what you're believing, to continue. By holding fast, we keep it active and working. We don't lose it. We don't let it go of it. We don't relinquish it. Now, we're not confessing it, hoping that we'll actually believe it. We're speaking it because we've gotten the right information that God set before us, life and death are blessing, death and evil. We chose the life side. <laughs> Remember one place God said, see that I set before the uh, Joshua, see that I set before the life and death, blessing and cursing, therefore choose life. Therefore, cho hey, stupid. God didn't call him stupid. Paul would, but God would. I, I mean, I'll, remember, I'll never forget the first time I read J.B. Phillips' translation of Galatians uh, 3.1. Oh, you, oh, foolish Galatians, King James. And I picked up Weymouth and read it one day. Oh, you dear idiots of Galatia. Man, I like the way J.B. Phillips said that. That's, Paul, I like Paul, man. You know, that's, that's my kind of language. You, you idiots. Okay? But see, so we, we understand God establishes, we established in the very beginning, life and death is in the power of our tongue. We've got to get the right information from the right place. We talked about it. it has Joshua 1 8, the book of the law, not depart out of thy mouth. I'll meditate therein. Okay? Then we say, God set before us blessing and cursing of life and death. Choose life. We're to choose life. It's a choice for us. But we do it by speaking it. And then once we believe it, we're speaking it, we're doing it, then we're going to hold fast to it. Why? Because holding fast calls it to continue. Holding fast to what we're believing and saying causes it and, and how do we hope as we keep speaking that we're not trying and again this is where we i have to draw the line and separate the difference between meditating and confessing because they look similar sound similar what's behind them is completely different if you're muttering the word you're feeding on it to produce faith. If you're confessing the word, you're speaking it because of faith. Okay? So we call them, we always, in our circles, we call both of them confession. And they're really not. When you're speaking what the Bible says and you, have, you really don't believe it, you're doing Joshua 1.8. You're muttering the word. But once faith has come, and you believe it, and you're speaking it because you believe it, now you continue to speak it, which we'll get into next week, the one with the issue of blood. You continue to speak it. Why? Because that speaking it on a continual basis, once you've released it by faith, you're not getting into faith, you're in faith. And you said it because you believe it. Now, continuing is holding fast. And you're holding that position of faith steadfast, you're holding fast to that position and not wavering because he's faithful that promised. Amen? I mean, this is, it's almost, I almost can get too simplistic, but the Bible shouldn't be too difficult. But it's, it's the shallowness sometimes in which we approach things or the, we get excited about something and, and, get, you know, we, we, and we kind of grab it with our heads. And I'll never forget Tony Cook. A number of years ago, I heard him say that I, I, 20 plus years ago. Had to be at least that long ago. He said something that has stuck with me ever since. Teaching, uh, I, I, he was teaching at somewhere. 
Rama or in a, in a winter Bible or something. I, I don't remember where he was. I just remember him teaching it. I went to school with Brother Tony. He was, he was a second year student when I was the first year. And uh, it was already, he was already manifesting things about his ministry back then. He was just, just one of those people that just, you know, God had a path for them, you know. But he said this. He said, never export what you haven't fully imported. Got a lot of people running around trying to export what they haven't imported. They've heard it, and they try to repeat it. And we, got, we have a lot of people in our circles that are hearing a part of something and then trying to go out and export it in the belief that they've gotten a hold of something completely. They haven't taken time to be a Berean and search the Scriptures to see whether those things be so or not. Receive it with all readiness of mind. I love the fact that people want to receive it with all readiness of mind. But don't stop there. Take it to the next step. Feed on it. Meditate on it. Dad Hagen said in one, uh, one time, uh, we was teaching on healing. He said, you know, uh, how do you, let, me, let me say how he said it. Did we just lose connection? All right, I lost connection. Hallelujah. He said, um, people go around and say, well, Brother Hagen said. He said, don't say Brother Hagen said. He said, is it Bible? Yeah. Then you tell people the Bible says. What I say won't matter. What I say won't do anything. You got to know what the Bible says, what the Word says. Amen? You got you to be in faith about it. You gotta, it's got to be a faith issue. It's got to be a faith result. It's got to be a faith event in your life. Not that Brother Hagen said it. Now what you're doing, you're trying to export what you hadn't fully imported. Hello? You're trying to export what you haven't fully imported, and it won't really work. Not for you and not to the person you're exporting it to. Huh. Word of faith is taught. Spirit of faith is caught. Okay? So, we want to hold fast. So, we want to curtio. Cause it to say, so, that's speaking what we already believe and we've already confessed. Continuing to speak it. Not trying to convince everybody on the planet that we got it. This is what we believe. Ask me my name right now. I'm not going to tell you. Uh, 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 oh, um, uh, Ed. One of my old friends, Eddie. All right. You know, if I get a Facebook post from somebody, they say, hey, Eddie, that was great. I know where you're from. <laughs> Pretty much high school. All right. You know, high school, community college, that, that era, you know. And I, I don't mind it. I mean, that's, you know, I, but, I, but I know who you are just by what you call me. You know, I know what part of my life you've been in and, and what, where, where, where we knew each other and, and where we met and that kind of thing. I know exactly where. Um, Pastor Ed, I know, uh, yep, you know, uh, I, I got that. I, kind, I just kind of know those kind of things. Actually, through Raymond, I went through, I, I was an idiot at Raymond too. So people, you know, people, you know, and I, I'm cool with that. I'm not whatever. It's just, I know. I don't have to wonder. I, I'm Eddie, or I'm Ed. You know, I'm Pastor Ed. I know who I am. You know, somebody says, what's your name? I can tell them. What do you believe? I can tell you. Now, if you've got to work on it, uh, well, uh, uh, then do you really believe? Have you fully imported it? If you've got to, uh-uh. You've got to try to, you know, come up with what you think they want to hear. Because you're sitting around a bunch of word of faith people. If you ain't say the wrong thing, they're going to bind you and cast that devil out of you and all that kind of stuff. See? We've got to get past all that and mature. I think it goes, it goes on for each generation. They get, they get their little things and they all try to outdo one another. Everybody tries to import where they're not export. I mean, export where they're not importing. And so then they're going around trying to say things to get people to believe that they really believe it. Now, I told this, I said this Sunday, I didn't sit there and tell the doctors, I bind you in Jesus' name. I told you it's going to be a testimony to you. You're going to see you were wrong. You know, I didn't, I didn't jump up and cast the cutting off devil out of the doctor. I went to cut my toe off. 
you know, and not go back to them. Don't receive what you say. Hello? See, we get crazy. No? So I, I, I'm committed to keeping my toes. I know what to do. You do your part. I'm going to do exactly what you tell me to do. And I'm going to do my part. We're almost completely closed up. We're so close. We are so close. Amen. And I got one doctor. Every time I see him, you keep proving the pundits wrong. That's his, that's his favorite statement. You just keep proving the pundits wrong. Him being one of them. Okay. Not, not, he, he's been very, he's been, he, this one has been extremely supportive. But he just, I think he's just amazed us doing it. And he just, and he's happy this, and he's glad. I mean, he's glad that my toe's not cut off. Not half as glad as I am. But I didn't sit around and tell them this is going to be a testimony to you that Jesus heals and all this kind of stuff. I made no bones about that I'm believing God. You know, that we're trusting God to, you know, and doing what you tell us to do, but we're trusting God to keep my toe. Believe in God, I'm keeping my toe. But I'm not being crazy. See, you're just out there trying to convince everybody, including yourself, that you really believe it. And you don't. You can tell by how you're talking, you don't. You're just trying to make yourself believe that you do. I've talked with people, and one minute they're saying one thing, and then somebody else, you know, the, the, the spouse will go, no, we, 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 no we, we, we don't receive that. That's right. I, and I'm thinking, you don't believe a word of it. You're saying what they want to hear. You can't hold fast like that. When you're unsure, you're, when you're double-minded, you're unstable in all your ways. But when you're when when you're convinced, when you know, when being fully persuaded that what he was promised, he was also able to not partially. By that old country song, I was almost persuaded to let strange lips lead me home. <laughs> That's from the 60s sometimes. I know because they played it on the, the, the console. Remember that turntables, the consoles with the big speakers in won't even, it was hi-fi, it won't even stereo, just hi-fi, you know. I was almost persuaded to let strange lips lead me home. <laughs> yeah. We'll kind of segue back on the back end. Go ahead and send your electronic offering or um, and whatever. You can go ahead and do that. Uh, those of you that have joined us late, uh, starting in, a, in the middle of, we've got to get some things together to be able to finish. I've already got some of the stuff, but um, once I've got the study guide, I, I realize I have to have more things in order to do this properly. So we're going to be ordering uh, more stuff to get, and then we're going to do this. We're going to begin teaching on Wednesday nights. As soon as we get in hand and get everybody signed up, we're going to announce to the church, and we want to see who wants to sign up and come. Um, on the authority of the believer from Brother Hagin, using his uh, study guide. They, they came out with a study guide in 2010, 2014, to go along with the Believer's Authority Legacy Edition. So we will be getting the Believer's Authority Study Guide, the Believer's Authority Study Edition, I mean um, Legacy Edition, and then uh, providing um, the tape series that go along with this, the Authority of the Believer and Reigning in Life as a King. Or reigning alive. I forgot exactly the name of it. These will be, we're going to give them to you. Okay? If you come, you get them. Okay? All righty? Um, because we want to do this, we want to do this Bible study. Let's put like first 10, get them. All right? Now, we'll probably do one per family if that's okay. All right? Um, if you want an extra study guide for yourself, then we can order that for you, but we'd like, no, but we'll do one per family. All right? You just can't. Ask them out to, you know, if I get seven families coming in, then, you know, they go one for everybody in there, and that's 20 people or something that, you know. So we, we are going to be doing that, teaching on the authority of the believer. It's a 10-lesson study guide, so we're talking 10 weeks minimum. <laughs> With Pastor Ed, <laughs> it's, 
in the year 2525. <laughs> However that song went. What was it? Oh, it's 25, 25. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. They were getting they were getting more drugs in them at that time. Yeah. Actually, actually, it's supposed to take three months. I thought it would take about three months. Two years later, and quite frankly, I think I just ended it to keep from going on another year. Now, we really did cover that well. That was, a, that, was a, that was a long, long, long time. Yes, Penny. Okay. And this is for? She has diabetes. Okay. It's a relative. Okay. All right. Twice removed. <laughs> Father, we pray over this prayer cloth. We thank you for the healing power of God's transferable. And as we lay hands on this cloth, even as you wrought special miracles by the hand of Paul, and as much as aprons and handkerchiefs went through them and laid on the sick, the, the diseases went out of them, the evil spirits went out of them, and they were made whole. We pray over this in the name of Jesus. Thank you for the he healing anointing going into it, and thank you when it's laid on this woman's body that she'll be uh, made whole from the top of her head to the soles of her feet, have a um, supernatural child birth. And the child will be not harmed. And in Jesus' name, all will be well. In the name of Jesus, amen and amen. All right, Penny. God bless you. All right. If you want to give, um, go ahead and, and ring that up. And uh, those of you online, if you want to give, you can do so through uh, PayPal and or uh, Square Cash. And you can send that on in. And uh, praise the Lord. We bless you for giving and tithing and call the blessings of God on you in Jesus' mighty name. And everybody agree to that by saying, uh, A to the men. How many of these do we have? Bye. <laughs>